you arrive? Yes, I arrived. Am I in the right room? I'm not sure. Yes, you are. Yes. 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 <laughs> so, here now. so you had a nice conversation. Great. Yeah. How to connect? So where did you start from and how could I contribute? So you started talking about the slides I shared or something else? No, no, no. Uh, uh, it was no, a different the concept topic. of the tool. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah, so, so I'm sharing the slides for you. <laughs> um, yeah, you just need to give okay. me a hint uh, about yeah. which the slide number you're talking. Yeah, so maybe start from the beginning quickly. Um, so I'm from, from T Systems, Deutsche Telekom, and since one year in that position working with communities and fostering community work, and if you go to page number two so we have our enterprise social network where we have a, a large group where communities can gather and share everything what we do and what we share and um, moving to slide number three so i'm quick on this one that i will stop at slide four or five a bit um on slide number three there's an, an update from june so where we had out of, I would say we have a 20,000 um, groups on our enterprise social network, and every group could be maybe a, a community or a department or whatever. So there's, it's not yet clear what group is what. So we started um, the last couple of years to or months to to ask communities, hey, do you want to be a kind of more self-organized, and what are the characteristics of self-organization? And these about now we have about 40 communities. They joined voluntarily this overarching approach to to talk about self-organization and what works and what could be improved. This is just a glimpse on where we stand. And if you move now to slide number four, um, the main idea is why we're doing this is that we basically want to put every <laughs> employee into, into the position to, to be your own CEO, to act like a CEO. That you can, so if you look on, on the right hand side in, in the circular picture, so everyone every person in, in the company can reach out to any anyone everyone so it's kind of peer-to-peer -peer, many many communication we would like um, to see and to foster in in, in our company and um, yeah but in order to say okay how where does this lead to where does this uh, uh, yeah connect us to so we say on the left hand side there's still a kind of organization yes yeah, so you have a, a hierarchy you have a top-down strategy you have departments you have a career path etc etc this we don't want to do ne yeah, to do neglect so we, we say it's living at the same time it's it's the dual operating system and uh, it means we are all part of an organization of an department here yeah, we we love money, we love security, that's all fine. And uh, But also we can sometimes step out of this and, and act more like uh, yeah, being in a community, being on eye level with each other, not uh, applying the forces of hierarchy in order to move people to do something. It's rather an invitation to, to all of them to Hey, if I have an idea and no one joins, maybe the idea is not good enough or my personality is not attracting enough. But want to put everyone into the position to experiment with this, uh, yeah, with this uh, possibility. And that's, I think, the main, the main description of the dual operating system. And if you move on on this next slide, um, so it's a bit more in, in, in the PowerPoint style. But the main things what we're currently experiencing and we want to learn of is these hashtags, the blue hashtags on the right hand side. Because you are very much used to the hashtags, the magenta ones on the left hand side. So we have duties, we have hierarchy, we are measurable, we have reporting structures, etc. So we are very, very 
much educated on this one. We are not so much educated on on the right hand, uh, let's say, uh, hashtags. You are doing things voluntarily, hierarchy free, and yeah, and um, and work with uh, with non linearity. Yeah, in terms of I move into a community, I don't know what's going to happen, and as a sudden I meet a person I would not have, would not have met. Yeah, if I haven't gone there, and um, and also this hashtag voluntarily sometimes it turns out into yeah people participate voluntarily or they don't participate and if you have invited to something and people do not show up i myself have to cope with this experience that people do not show up and this is sometimes yeah, a, a tough emotion and so this this is the story about the dual operating system i don't want to go too much further so i'm very interested in 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 your statements. What's working in you? If what do you think? If this, yeah, what it what it triggers in you, and and also learning what you are doing and how we can maybe connect on that. Yeah. So I think we are not so many. I can see maybe five six people. So if we maybe could do a quick round table and you share what's in your head. Could start where it starts. Mm -hmm. Well, I might I might start. I turn on my video. I think that the that the model of quarter is a really important one, and, and I like to use it. Also. And what I think is important is, like Steffi said, when you weren't here, uh, quarter is very famous for this eight step of change, and this suggests sort of a very linear change process. <coughs> know where we are, I know where we want to go. Uh, we have to decide what the way from A to B is, and then have this typical change agents and the change. And what a lot of people didn't realize is that in the new book uh, by Cotter, he changed it from eight steps to eight accelerators and talked about things like um, the guiding coalition as sort of a center of networks inside this or informal organization. So this is a totally different approach to change. And I think this is very important to see communities and networks and guides and the guiding coalition as essential to change in contrast to the traditional change management approach. Uh, I fully agree on that. And I think that um, especially this time that we all went for that we are still in has shown more than more than ever that um, it's really the this community feeling that we that we seek for and that this can make all the difference and that well, when we just look at what what people actually missed um, from their from the from not going to the office anymore was this meeting colleagues, this being together. So the relationships to people, also there, kind of having this community of colleagues, and so all these are examples why it is so important to transfer this this um, desire, this need that humans have also more into work life and not having this this classical image anymore of yeah this this classical hierarchy and as you showed it here with those with those hashtags rather than yeah shifting to this relationship building having a common a common purpose a shared a shared vision and yeah i think this has become very clear in also in this in this time of the of the pandemic and of course this com this working in community is more um or even better established already on a on a virtual level and this is how we can really accelerate new ways of working and change the way an organization is is operating and if you achieve such a, as we hear from the model uh, of cutter if you can establish such a guiding correlation no matter if you really call it guide network or any other network of, of multipliers um 
such a network of volunteers, um, then you can really um, have a completely new way of driving change in an organization. And so this, yeah, bringing together those two approaches, I think is very valuable. Yeah, thank you. Anyone else? You point, comment, a question. Alexander is raising his hand. Yes, it sounds very interesting, this model. And uh, my question is more related to my own topic for after your <laughs> session. So for me, um, it's not in every time a very, um, how can I say it, fruitful cooperation. So my question is, do we have some constitution, a kind of constitution that guarantees the communities their existence? and the community members their existence and how will you act if there is a conflict between the hierarchy and the community scheme yeah that's um, i think that's hard to, hard to say that's the main the main characteristics um, where we're working on in order that we can avoid conflicts and i'm now in this in this position for the last 12 months and we have many communities and thousands of people in these communities and the first thing they started telling me was oh my god so people are not uh, active in communities people are not allowed to work uh, in communities so and, and and all these these things and basically this is a symptom this that that the organization is sometimes against communities for whatever reasons so there on one hand people say we we support communities but on the other hand uh, some managers do not allow people to attend to meetings and so forth and digging deeper into that one it turned out that most so i did not find any person who could not join so these are were all excuses excuses not against the organization excuses against um, the, the community leaders because they ran into the trap acting like managers so and and to say it honestly i'll never use a word community manager even his call is, is is named community managers because we then apply the same principles of hierarchy like or we we we, we, we are tending to apply the same uh, principles like in the hierarchical structure yeah. so we are using more the words of community facilitators or community uh, hosts or, or community tenants whatever because this this is kind of this this um, yeah it's 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 in it's it's uh, if we, if we need also endlich yeah, uh, I think yeah. I think this is this is a very important issue. And in the original works by Etienne Wenger said uh, all, they called the role community coordinator or community facilitator. And I think uh, later on, via the topic of social media management, we came back to the to the word or the the role community manager. Perhaps this is a very important issue to not name them like that. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, yeah this, this is one point. Okay, but there's another comment, yeah. Oh, I did not want to interrupt you, sorry. <laughs> no, okay. Um, that, just to, to, to highlight where we are currently working on. So, we create, let's say, self-organization learning and training tracks where people can experience living in a non-hierarchical environment. And this is sometimes very difficult, but we are, uh, we, we are, we have now 30 people through this year. We are continuing with another 30, 40, and we are open to all other companies. So because it has become digital and we would like to learn commonly. So this is also an invitation in order to experience these seven hashtags on your own skin. And these living these, these uh, hashtags can be sometimes very, very, very challenging. It is one thing. The other thing is um, that we don't, um, let's say, become a danger for for the management system. We we, are, we drive this full disclosure hashtag. So it means everything what we do, everything what we we work out. 
we fully share it openly on our enterprise social network or even further via, via LinkedIn, whatever. And this is such a big challenge for me and I think for many others. So for instance, if I get into the knowledge of there's a position where I could apply, I could be the first and maybe then I get it. Before I apply myself to share it in the group. And this is a, an exercise uh, we are doing. And, and this is challenging for all of us in order to be, to act like that. And there are many more th let things we're working on. Maybe last item is that we say, Sometimes people complain they don't have time to work for, for these network organizations or for communities. So currently we are preparing a board proposal where we say, this is working time. We don't want to have a distinction anymore. So if, if, a, if a manager says you're not allowed to work on the enterprise social network, you're not allowed to share this or that. So I think this is the wrong culture. So we say, um, communities offer so many uh, insights uh, and spaces for creativity etc so this is this i can i fully reuse for my work and i cannot say this is them free time or or ehrenamt or something else so this is working time and we should be paid for it point yeah. mm, absolutely yeah Okay. And from a time perspective, I think we had we are, we are done, right? Or yes, um, we are at the end. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. So we are yeah. more or less at the end of the time slot. Um, yeah, next so step starts at 50, yeah. so we have four minutes for yeah. break or anything, and then Alex will start. And I'm already in the room. <laughs> <laughs> it's the invitation to all of you, which has been short. So if if you want to connect, if you want to join, and I'm interested who was there, so because I'm I could not see you, so leave me leave me a message on LinkedIn or via email or whatever. I would love to connect. That's a big thank you, George, by Rebecca in the chat that you can't see at the moment. Uh, can you send me uh, the slide so I can link it in the session documentation? Or a cut, a cut on you have I can it? forward them. Yeah, yeah. Yes. I will forward so thank them. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, for thank your you very much. And the input.